Hey YouTube, hope everyone is having an awesome day. Today I'd like to show you exactly what I teach and used to, I guess used to teach my uh, high school students. And it is applicable to anyone just because if you haven't been taught financial literacy, this stuff might be new. And if you have been taught financial literacy, well, in that case, this will be a review, but I hope you get some value out of this. Basically, I'll be showing you financial literacy in about 15 minutes or less, a couple of the principles that I use for teaching financial literacy. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I actually borrowed this from my book, How to Never Be Broke Again. Um, if that is interesting, you can check it out on Amazon. It's also free on Spotify. Just search How to Do Never Be Broke Again, and also, please hit that subscribe button. It does help with the algorithm. And if you're serious about taking your financial literacy to the next level even, and interested in becoming a professional real estate investor, I do real estate coaching with Teammate Real Estate. So I'll put a Calendarly link below and you can book an appointment there. It'll be very quick. I just wanna see, and I'd love to give you a free strategy session to see how we can help you get to your goals exactly. And if I personally can't help you, our company can't help you, well, I'd like to point you in the right direction. That being said, let's get started learning financial literacy in 15 minutes or less. Before we get started, this is for educational purposes. So if you wanna hit that pause button and then read this disclaimer real quick, that'd be awesome. I'll let you have a moment to do that. And now that you've read that, that being said, let's look at how we can become financially literate and never be broke again. So first part here is broke is a mindset and you don't want to ever have that mindset. Here's a very um, clear comparison to a little bit of the mentality of being broke and the mentality of being wealthy. I really want you to move away from being broke and towards being wealthy. So first one is success is not important if you're broke. However, if you're trying to be wealthy, trying to be on the right path, success is an obligation. Next, broke people will blame others, whereas the wealthy will take accountability and responsibility. Broke people will spend money. Make sure if you want to be wealthy, you're investing money. Next, broke people refuse to study. It's too hard, it's too boring, whatever excuses there are. However, wealthy people will read and study and continually dedicate to mastery in and around their purpose. Next, broke people have put their attention on the past, whereas wealthy people seem to have attention on the future or even attention on the present moment. Broke people are usually income driven. Wealthy people are net worth driven, meaning they're focusing on building their net worth to provide that generational wealth. Broke people tend to think small. Wealthy people tend to think big. And that tends to kind of, if you're kind of having this conversation with non wealthier people that are on that path, it sounds like they're bragging, but they're really just sharing stories and lessons that you can learn from. Next, broke people fear change. Wealthy will actually embrace change and learn to love adapting. Next is broke people criticize, wealthy people compliment and push people up. Broke people will waste time. This is like Netflix, video games, um, nothing wrong with those things in moderation. However, wealthy people tend to buy time and such as myself, I will literally buy time and put employees, put systems in place so that I can enjoy Netflix and video games. Again, in moderation. Broke people will cause problems. You'll notice this, that if you kind of work with or kind of hire broke people, have that broke mindset, they will cause more problems than they can solutions. Whereas wealthy people will solve problems. They will not stop until they solve problems while they do it on their own or hire a team and them solving problems actually buys back time later on. Whereas a broke person will waste time and cause problems. And thus maybe they put in work for an hour, but during that hour they make some mistakes and now that's going to cost the company or that person more than just one hour. And then next is broke people have a single flow of income. Wealthy people will have multiple sources of income. Finally, Broke people are work driven. They enjoy, maybe they don't enjoy, but they'll show up and once work is done, it's done. Versus wealthy people are goal driven. They will continue working till they hit that goal. Once they hit that goal, they celebrate for a moment. For me, it's about a day. And the next, back onto the next goal, back on their purpose. 
Now, real quick before we kind of jump in, you need to understand money. What is money? Money is an artificially created middle ground used to exchange goods and services, meaning it's needed to trade in life. Now, money has no inherent value except the paper it's printed on. Just like a hammer, it's just a piece of metal until it's used for something. Money is a tool. Money in itself is not going to necessarily bring you happiness, but it's how you use money to reach certain goals, to help certain people, and essentially to liberate your bloodline. Because if you live in the West, and if you weren't born into money, you essentially have a financial freedom number that you need to get to as a net worth to consider yourself free. Free in the sense that now you get to work when you want, how you want, do what you want, work with who you want, where you want, and that's going to be essentially that financial freedom which is gonna allow you to kind of enjoy life a little bit more, or at least solve the world's material problems. So here we're looking at Rich Dad Poor Dad's cash flow quadrant. I highly suggest that you study this more in detail than what we can cover in this video. Maybe in a future video, if you guys like this, make sure to put in the comments what aspects you like. In this video, I can go into more detail there. But here it's just, okay, we all have to start on the E side, which is the employee side. Next, we'll probably move up to being self-employed where now we don't necessarily have a job, but now we own our job, we've created that, and basically we're allowed to provide ourselves with work, not ask for a boss um, or daddy to give us a job. Um, however, the issue there is we're still trading time for money. Now, once we move on to being a business owner, now we own a system. For me, system is as simple as a checklist. A lot of the businesses, especially the ones in the beginning that I started was just, okay, I was given a checklist or I created a checklist. Now I had that system, I can pass that checklist around and other people can kind of do the work. Now, people are working with me to get money. And then finally, as an investor, now I own investments. That's where we want to get to at the very end. You might have to travel this whole way, but as an investor, your money is now working for you. Now in my book, How to Never Be Broke Again, I give you 10 missions. And here we're gonna look at the first one, which is every time you catch yourself thinking or saying, I can't afford that, I want you to change your words because our words determine our thoughts and our thoughts determine our actions, our actions determine our uh, beliefs and our beliefs determine who we become. That being said, you wanna change those thoughts and words to how can I afford that? So basically when I bought my first car, it was essentially a $3,000 BMW. Now I could have worked $10 an hour and a total of 300 hours. I could sell a thousand dollar product to three people. I could sell a $3,000 product to one person, or I could get a hundred people to sign up to a $30 monthly membership. These are just different ways that I'm thinking of, okay, how do I get a $3,000? What I actually did was I worked a certain amount of hours plus I put that in dividend paying stocks and eventually that dividend paying stock, those dividends, paid for my car so basically that stock paid for my car which is kind of cool next principle is you always want to pay yourself first i highly suggest that you learn how to create your own financial statements which is going to include an income statement and then a balance sheet for your personal finances so your income statement is a representation of income and expenses for a person business or entity the balance statement, on the other hand, is going to be the representation of the assets and liabilities for, again, a person, business, or entity. Now, income is how much money is coming in. For me, I like to calculate that month to month or even week to week. Expenses, how much money is going out or being spent. Assets is something that puts money in my pocket, such as a rental income, such a, like a rental property, sorry, um, some dividend paying stocks, maybe you have an equity in a business. And the last piece is gonna be your liabilities, and that's something that takes money out of your pocket. That, simply enough, is debt. So here we're gonna look at different types of ways that people use their balance sheets. If you look at the first one on top here. Um, this person uses income to pay other people, corporations, entities first, and does not know how to use debt. So they make money, and then they spend it. Next person, a little bit better, uses income to pay off bad debt, and then pays other people, corporations, or entities first again. So they'll pay off some debts and then use some of that, the rest to pay the rest off. It's a little bit better because now they're getting the experience of using debt properly. Next, the third person down below is gonna be 
someone that uses income to buy assets and assets to pay for expenses this is a little bit better now they're putting money away into assets maybe they're buying some stocks maybe they're buying some crypto maybe they're buying some real estate and then that extra income is going to pay for their expenses they're getting closer to freedom here and then finally my um kind of video is blocking it but this person uses income and debt to essentially buy assets that's going to pay off their debt and then that's going to pay off their expenses so now they're using both acquisition of assets while also using good debt in the form of real estate this is what we call as using other people's money and then that's how we kind of grow very quickly because we both get the access of an education around acquisition of assets and also utilization of good debt Mission number two is you want to follow the QR code. I'll actually put a link below because my video is kind of blocking the QR code to get a free budget template that you can complete using your own numbers. Having a budget is very important. But also, I want you to create your own financial statement because those two go hand in hand. A budget and a financial statement are both necessary for you to reach your financial literacy goals. Third principle is going to be don't work for money. Have your money work for you active income is used to buy income producing assets passive income from those assets is then used to buy your expenses mission three now is you want to start researching different sources of passive income and begin investing in those passive income sources don't forget to budget into your investments into assets meaning there should be a line in your budget and your financial statement where you are let's say weekly or monthly buying assets fourth principle is going to be create multiple sources of income which could be side hustles so you have earned income that's income from working a job you have profit income income from buying and selling interest income that's going to be income from lending out money you have dividend income that's income from owning stocks that pay a dividend next there's rental income that's income from renting out a property sixth is capital gains that's income from an increase in value once you sell you have royalty income as well which comes from others using your idea such as like books or programs and then finally residual income that's income from past sales that continually pay you mission four you want to start asking yourself what other sources of income would i like to start pick a few begin researching them and of course the whole point of this mini course is that you start them that you actually take action I don't want you to watch this video and then one three four five years into the future you haven't started any other income source do not allow that to be you I want you to be financially literate not just thinking about finances fifth concept here is going to be give before you receive basically you want to ask yourself why you want to give and help others well, one it cultivates an abundance of mindset my cup is so full that i can afford to offer other people opportunities number two it just feels good to help three as you learn new skills you'll meet new people and you'll develop yourself by going out and just trying to help the world and then four is going to be there's actually tax benefits that you can search up i'm from canada so i like to search on cra um, website to find out what are the tax advantages of donating to different charities um, and helping out these charities kind of reach their goals mission five start asking yourself what charities do i want to work with and then begin donating it doesn't have to be too much money now it's fine you want to pick a local charity let's say and see if you can start volunteering if you don't have the money just yet you do have another important resource if not more important which is time and you can also donate your time well more than halfway there next principle is going to be you want to know your tax laws there are rsp tax laws in canada tfsa tax laws in canada self-employment and business tax write-offs are awesome charity tax rules an author tax rule in manitoba which is kind of cool that's a small reason why i'm an author in manitoba um, there's tax deductible interest there's real estate tax benefits that are awesome i go in depth in that in my private inner circle real estate coaching course tax brackets is another important tax rule that you need to research and then it's always changing so here i'm not really showing you what are the tax laws but i'm going to be showing you how you can learn them in the next slide where we'll talk about the next mission again 
I'm just introducing some principles so that you can become financially literate and never be broke again, but it's up to you to take the action. I shouldn't be here caring more about your situation than you do. I want you to win and I hope that you want to win and understand these tax rules and financial literacy because if you're in the West, if you're in Canada like me, you have the privilege of living in a capitalist society. It might not be perfect, but it's the best that we got and you might as well learn it. Now, mission six is you want to meet with a tax professional, such as a, a, a tax attorney or a t accountant, and continue learning about taxes on the CRA website and continue investing in your own tax strategies. Now, if you don't have money to meet with a tax attorney or an accountant, take them out for lunch. You'll pay maybe $60, $50, maybe a little bit more, depending on where you go, and you'll have their undivided attention to kind of pick their brain. Um, it's another way, a little bit of a hack that you can use to contact a tax professional. Next principle here, knowledge is power, but only if you take action. So knowledge is not learning from videos, not learning from YouTube, not even learning on this video or even books, but it's really taking this info and using it in the real world. That's exactly why I give you missions here. It's because I want you to actually do this, okay? I've seen time and time again, people I've known from the past or people I still know that say they want to get financially literate, give them all the info, sit down, talk about money, and then a year passes, nothing changed. Another year passes, no change in income, no change in assets. Another year passes, again, no change in skills and whatnot. And it's like, what are we doing here? We're wasting each other's time and instead we could just take simple action you just need to go through these missions try the missions a lot of these missions don't take longer than 15 minutes and by doing that you're gonna go and invest in your own financial education but of course you're gonna have to take action so mission seven here is get some books on finances go to some seminars take some courses but always apply what you learn in real life right away this is something that i do consistently I'm always on my phone right I'm I'm on Instagram I'm on YouTube I'm making sure that okay if I see a good idea I'm writing it down and I'm immediately trying it maybe not the same day but that same week I'm immediately trying it because if not uh, I'm doing what's called being in a derp state which is like I'm just sitting there thinking that I'm learning something because I'm on YouTube or on Instagram and then not doing anything about it Okay. You need to also review all the previous missions mentioned either in my book, How to Never Be Broke Again, but in this also in the same video and just make sure that you completed them. Next, you want to move towards a net worth paradigm. So income is how much money you've made and continue to make. Net worth is how much you've kept and added to your net worth. The net worth formula is pretty simple. It's all your total assets minus your total liabilities. And by focusing on this, we're going to make sure that we're moving away from being broke, which is a net worth of zero. If you have a net worth that's negative, you essentially have to work hard to become broke at that point, which again, I totally believe in you can do it. You just need to put in the work and take action. However, once it's a positive net worth, now let's start moving towards the next step, which we'll see after this principles mission. So mission eight, you want to calculate your net worth. You can also calculate your net worth using like a template. There's a template here. I'll put the link down below as well to access this template. However, if you know how to do it without a template, that's pretty much you're on the road to become even more financially literate. Next principle sounds simple, but you'd be very surprised how many people avoid this and kind of ignore this is make more than you spend. So if your income is less than your expenses, you got negative cash flow. It's not good. If your income is more than your expenses, you have positive cash flow. I personally, actually, this is more higher level things. Um, I try to make my cash flow zero in the sense that if I have a positive cash flow, that just means I have extra money to put away into other investments or put away into my cash war chest. Okay. So if I have an extra surplus of a thousand, two thousand extra dollars or 500 extra dollars, I'm stashing that away and I'm calculating in my savings, my investments and money that I'm putting away as sort of an expense so that I can reduce my cash flow to nothing. I want to put every single dollar and give it a job. Essentially, it has to have a purpose. So the ninth mission is you want to review your budget. You want to make sure 
that you're actually making more than you spend and you're continuing increasing your income by acquiring more assets or by acquiring more skills. I do consider skills as an asset and it's one of those assets that doesn't necessarily depreciate. It actually compounds over time. So I've spent money on sales and marketing coaches, relationship coaches, um, health and wealth coaches, all these aspects not only allow me to build a good base so that I'm in let's say like my top most potential and that's going to allow me to not only generate more income and provide value to my bloodline but also just live a better life essentially the final principle here is know your financial security number your fs number is the total net worth needed to be able to pay for all your monthly expenses using only passive income so you'll take your monthly expenses times 12, that's gonna be your yearly expenses, and you're gonna divide that by the return on investment. Here I've used 10%, you could also use 5% if you're a little more conservative, depending on how your business functions or your investments function, and then you'll see that for a person spending 3,000 bucks a month, getting about a 10% return, their financial security number is about 360,000. So if they have 360,000 as a net worth, and that's producing a 10% return on investment, they can essentially pay all their three thousand dollars of expenses every single month without having to actively work that's your financial security number there are levels to this game so there is a financial independence number which i'd love for you to search and find out on your own there's also a financial freedom number which is again even higher and even to the next level the new paradigm and then finally there's your absolute financial freedom number that's a paradigm so high that you'd literally have to write down all your wants and needs and think about your wildest dreams and essentially that net worth will allow you to have that without again having to lift a finger but again there's levels to this that you got to take action to rise above the levels be honest with yourself think about what level you're at are you even financially secure at this point so now the final mission is you want to calculate your financial security number and if you want to take things to the next level start calculating and researching financial independence financial freedom and an absolute financial freedom so i hope you guys got some value out of these 10 principles there are some links down below if you want to get that budget you want to get those templates but also more importantly if you want to take this to the next level and you're ready to not only just be financially literate but reach your goals in finances and in life and want to learn how to do real estate using none of your own money. That's what I specialize in. Make sure you book an appointment on the calendarly. I'd love to do a free strategy session with you so we can kind of build a personalized plan and see, can we help you reach your real estate goals? Now, before you even want to jump into real estate, if you don't even know what income or expenses is, I highly suggest that you watch this video, continue learning, do the missions. Once you've done the missions, you will be more than ready to take that course. Hit that link in the calendar, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the continued support. I love teaching finances and being able to show you guys what we do as professional real estate investors. And it's just part of my purpose to master teaching. And this is one of the ways that I can do that. So. Patrick J. Hilary here, teacher, author, real estate investor, and real estate coach. This video went a little bit longer than 15 minutes, but I hope you guys got a ton of value of that. Again, please, please, please do the missions. I want you to win. I want you to reach all those goals, not just because I'm an awesome person, but because if you hit those goals, that means you're going to have an abundance of funds and you're probably developing into a really awesome person as you go through those trials and tribulations and then together we can build something even larger um, whether that be within the inner circle coaching program or outside of that selfishly if you become wealthy and we end up working together we can compound this thing to 10x 100x of what we could do alone so again that's kind of my mission help you guys help a little bit of my tribe reach those goals so that you can become confident competent and of course wealthy in the sense that you have passive income coming in every single month and then now you can do the things that you love and hopefully we can work together whether that be coaching if it is hit that calendarly button again book an appointment it's very quick and no pressure there 
with the sale if it works awesome if it doesn't awesome at least we got to figure out how we can help you out but also maybe we can work together outside of the coaching program hope that offer you some value take care have an awesome day you guys are the best bye